It's been a really good week so far. I know our players and coaches and their families have really enjoyed the hospitality here at the bowl game. They've done so many things. The hotel and the staff have been tremendous. So we've had a we've had about as good a bowl week in preparation as as I've seen. So we'll we'll see how that translates Friday. Yeah, I was going to ask. There are obviously bigger bowls, but as far as you know, you got 18 to 22 year olds. This is probably the perfect place for them to be during bowl season with all the theme parks and activities. There's no doubt about that because you know, at, at the way, especially the way Dabo has structured things, you know, giving them the opportunity to get some really good practice in, get some training in, but then leaving large blocks of time, which is. As all you know, I mean, that's what's necessary to be able to go and enjoy the park. So having those large blocks of time have given the, the young men and uh, our, our staff here time to go and enjoy what Orlando is all about. And it is. It's a, it's a great destination. You, you have freed up some salary with Coach Morris leaving. Have, have you and Dabo talked about maybe a Brent Venables extension or a raise or maybe some of the other assistants with Tony and Jeff getting promotions? We've, we've talked about that and we'll probably finalize all of that once we get back from the game. How much of the uh, what you did with the committee can you talk about right now? The, uh, uh, you know, the our, our kind of our work's still in front. I mean, so you yeah. got to play the games, but you know, it was a great experience, and I and I think that you know what went into putting that all together and the great work that the college football playoff committee staff did uh, gave the twelve of us the opportunity to really get all the information that we needed and come at it from twelve different directions, but really kind of create a consensus around those four teams that ended up playing in the in the playoff. Have you received any friendly emails from Baylor or TCU fans um, talking about your selections? The, the only thing I can tell you guys is, you know, the college football playoff home base is in Dallas. So we were all leaving from DFW to go back to where we were. So I'm sitting on the airplane, and in the seat in front of us for about the first 30 minutes of the flight were uh, two, I think they, they were Baylor fans, just screaming about how the college football playoff um, didn't do them right. And of course I sat there with my hat down and reading a book and <laughs> said, okay guys. And luckily they got off in Atlanta before I did and that was that was all I heard. But really it's been, you know, I think people looked at it and they said, you know these four, it's kind of hard to argue with these four. And uh, you know, just moving on from there. What did you learn the most from this experience uh, being involved in it and, and how it affects or does it help the ACC, Clemson, or anything like that? Well, first of all, one of the major tenets of being on this committee, whether it was Oliver Love, Barry Alvarez, Jeff Long, Pat Hayden, or myself, and it's been a huge tenant from the time we all got on the committee, is you leave your conference hat at the door, you leave your school hat at the door, you're here for all of college football, and you know it's not you're representing this conference or another conference, or certainly not your team, is you're recused when when they're speaking about your team. So I, I don't know from a conference perspective if we learned anything. Um, I, I just think it's a, it, it was a really good exercise in consensus building and, and people coming forward with, with different views. I mean, there were committee members who, who really liked certain teams. There were others who were a little lukewarm, and sometimes one was able to convince the other. There was a few aha moments along the way. Well, that's a great point. So let's explore that a little further. So. Um, it was a good. It was a good process. Looking forward to having the opportunity again next year to go through it. Did it wear people out? You had one guy have to leave, sort of in midstream, and then you had a guy resign his job the other day. You well, can't I, stay on the committee. Are no, you, are you? I think for for Oliver, I think you know, from an athletic director's perspective, what Oliver is going to bring to the NCA office is incredibly valuable. President Emmert talked about that when he first took the job at the NCA of bringing in a practitioner to help work the day-to-day, -day, uh, not only communication, but day-to-day -day workings of the NCA office and make it more in line with what happens on a campus. And Oliver, I think, is the perfect guy to do that. He's a great communicator. He's incredibly intelligent. And I, I think he, that position is really going to help the communications and the uh, ability to understand both sides of the equation, what the NCAA and the member institutions as a whole are looking to do, and maybe how it affects individual conferences or schools. Would uh, anybody ever get to see how you voted when you get your final rankings come out on how you guys did it? Or is that say kind of quiet? No, that's it. all those will be. Uh, none of those were were kept. It was just all done.
far as uh, what you guys learned as a committee, is there something that you say, okay, maybe we can do this better next year? We're actually all tasked uh, with, by the middle of January, uh, putting together a little paragraph or two on what we thought might help the committee in, in future years, and, and we'll pull that all together. We're going to have a conference call as a group later on in January, and then they'll take those ideas, the ones that we agree on that make sense, and they'll move that to the management group, and that's the collegiate commissioners and the athletic director at Notre Dame, and they'll they'll talk about those and see if any of them are feasible. So. The thing that's probably the most uh, the th most talked about with the Clemson fan base is Michigan State being jumped in the final at pushing Clemson down the bowl. Talk about how that went. I mean, I kind of heard <coughs> how that that came about, but in your words. Well, I think the one thing that has to, it, and I don't know that it was said enough. Um, the rankings are a clean sheet of paper each week. And while those teams didn't play one another, there were other teams around them that played. And when you looked at that for, for the, the last and final ranking, um, you know, committee members you know, put up the teams and looked at their full resumes as it compares to other teams, and that's how it ended up. Uh, you know, again, that, that last... That last ranking is probably going to be on the minds of a lot of committee members when they write that paragraph, um, you know, come January. And is that is that the right timing to be able to do one of those before you do the last one? We certainly all understand how important it is for our television partner ESPN to have those rankings each week. We could argue about whether it started one week too early, one week too late, you know, those kind of things. But during the year, it created a great amount of excitement, and that was. That was important for college football. Um, but it's that last week that I think people, um, we, we might have an opportunity to talk about. After January, do you break for a little while before like you reconvene in say July or August and start on the, the second year? We'll have a conference call at the end of uh, January, then we'll have one in-person meeting at the beginning of April, April around right. the final four, and then we'll convene again in, um, in August. Okay.